the quickest dessert you will ever make in a cast iron skillet, s'mores dip. Like, seriously, so easy. Heat up your skillet in the oven, add butter, let it melt, then add in chocolate chips. Top the chocolate chips with large marshmallows and bake until puffed and golden. Use graham crackers for dipping. It's definitely a lot less messy than regular s'mores and so easy, you'll be making this really often. I'm gonna show you how to make hard shell ice cream topping in less than five minutes and it all starts with a jar of Nutella. Put two tablespoons of Nutella and one tablespoon of coconut oil in a microwave safe bowl and heat it up for about 20 seconds. Then simply stir the mixture until both ingredients are fully incorporated. This is gonna continue to melt the coconut oil. Next, just let it cool. Now for the fun part. Pour the topping over your favorite vanilla ice cream and wait for it to dry. You'll see as time passes, the shell begins to harden. It's so satisfying to crack into the hard shell topping. This process took less than five minutes and the hazelnut and coconut flavor perfectly complement the vanilla ice cream. Deep fried Oreos aren't just for the fair. Making fried Oreos at home is so easy, you'll wonder why you only ever order them at the fair. Just mix one and a half cups of pancake mix, one cup of milk, and one egg. Stick a fork in the cream of the Oreo to easily dip in the batter, then fry at 375 degrees until the batter puffs up and is nice and golden brown. Dust with powdered sugar and try not to eat the whole package of Oreos. This fudge is so good, they've been serving it at the White House for years. Combine two cups marshmallow cream, 12 ounces of semi-sweet chocolate chips, and 12 ounces of chopped German sweet chocolate in a large bowl. Boil four and a half cups of sugar, 12 ounces of evaporated milk, two tablespoons of butter, and a pinch of salt for one minute, then simmer for seven. Pour that into the bowl of chocolate and stir until melted. Add chopped nuts, then line a nine by 13 dish with parchment paper. Transfer the fudge to the dish and let it sit overnight. Use the parchment to lift the fudge out of the dish and cut into squares. Warning may become addictive. When fudge and cake join forces, you get one fabulous dessert. Basically brownies in cake form, this fudge cake is equally fudgy and cakey and is one of the easiest cakes you'll ever make. Melt butter and bittersweet chocolate, then stir in granulated sugar and let stand 10 minutes before whisking in four eggs. Fold in flour, chopped pecans, and vanilla until just combined. Then place batter in a greased or parchment lined baking dish. I prefer parchment to help ease the cleanup process, plus it makes it super easy to get the baked cake out of the dish. Bake at 300 degrees for about an hour, then let cool completely before slicing and dusting with powdered sugar. Check the link in our bio for the recipe to try it for yourself. The secret to the best chocolate cake is actually a sandwich condiment that I know is in your fridge right now. Brew one and a half cups strong coffee and mix with a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. Whisk the dry ingredients in a large bowl and beat the sugar and eggs with an electric mixer. Now here's the secret ingredient, mayo. The tank and creaminess of this condiment helps make the cake super moist and brings out the chocolate flavor. Add dry ingredients and coffee mixture alternately to the mixer, then bake at 350 for around 25 minutes. Add chocolate frosting. You will never not use mayo in your cake again. Some nights you just want chocolate cake. And the batter for this one comes together in one bowl in less than five minutes. In a large bowl, whisk together flour, brown sugar, and cocoa powder. Add baking soda and kosher salt and mix to combine. Next, add very hot coffee, vegetable oil, and apple cider vinegar. Whisk until well incorporated. Pour batter into an eight or nine inch cake pan that has been greased and lined with parchment paper. Transfer to a 350 degree oven for 50 to 55 minutes until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. Surprisingly moist, super simple, and good with or without frosting. You might make this for yourself as often as I do. If you are from certain parts of the South, you'll know that this isn't a regular chocolate cake. This little layer chocolate cake is made up of 18 layers of vanilla cake with a thin layer of chocolate icing spread between each one. Where I'm from in South Georgia, they can range anywhere from 10 to 18 layers, but of course, because I'm so extra, I always go for 18. The Smith Island cake in Maryland and the Doe Bears cake of New Orleans are similar, but this particular recipe can only be found south of the Nat Line in Georgia. My great-grandmother made this recipe every year for my mom's birthday and increased the layers by one for each year. If you're from South Georgia, you've definitely eaten a few of these in your life, and well, if you're not, bless your heart. Chocolate-covered strawberry cheesecake might be the best dessert to ever be invented. Start with the traditional graham cracker crust pressed into the bottom and up the sides of a 9-inch springform pan. Bake and cool your crust completely. For the cheesecake, puree strawberries in a food processor until smooth. Then beat softened cream cheese with eggs, vanilla, flour, and sugar. 
Add in your pureed strawberries and some pink gel food coloring, then pour into your cooled crust. Bake and let cool for two hours before chilling overnight. Take it over the top with a chocolate ganache that's basically butter, melted chocolate, cream, and some corn syrup. Then garnish with strawberries. This is so pretty and delicious that Cupid will even come running. The very first Mardi Gras celebration was held in Mobile, Alabama in 1703. Instead of king cakes and jambalaya, the classic carnival food in Mobile is the moon pie. In fact, Mobile's love for moon pies extends far beyond Mardi Gras too. They even have a giant moon pie for their moon pie drop on New Year's Eve. While nothing can beat the original, my homemade moon pies are delicious and so fun to make. Texas sheet cake is one of those chocolate desserts that has never really blown my mind. I've always felt like the chocolate flavor wasn't all the way there and I've always preferred rich, decadent brownies over the sheet cake. But this Texas sheet cake in a skillet totally changed my mind on the matter. It is bursting with rich chocolate flavor and the cooked icing really takes it over the top. I'm team no nuts in my bounties, but since pecans are a classic garnish for Texas sheet cake, I added them to the top but they're totally optional. Honestly, I prefer it without them. Y'all know I make a ton of dessert videos and there is no way I can ever eat all of the desserts I make. I usually give them away to friends and family, but there was no way I was going to share this one. My fiance and I cleaned this skillet right up by ourselves in a matter of a few days. And if y'all make it, I'm pretty confident you'll do the same thing. I'm gonna show you how to make these adorable peanut butter chocolate acorns with four simple ingredients. Begin with a Nutter Butter Bite, then using store-bought chocolate frosting in a piping bag, put a little bit of chocolate frosting on the flat side of the Nutter Butter and secure a Hershey Kiss. Then using the same exact process on the other side of the Nutter Butter, secure a peanut butter chip. This treat is so cute and it comes together in seconds. A boozy coffee and chocolate milkshake? This is how you make a bushwhacker. Blend three cups of ice, half a cup of cream of coconut, and a quarter cup of each of these. Coffee liqueur, Irish cream, creme de cacao, and dark rum, plus two tablespoons chocolate syrup and four cups vanilla ice cream until smooth. Drizzle chocolate syrup down the sides of your glass and pour in your boozy shake. Garnish with chocolate shavings because you can. Cheers, y'all. I'm gonna show you how to make this healthy and delicious chocolate bark with four simple ingredients. Start by melting dark chocolate in a double boiler or in the microwave. Then pour it on a parchment lined baking sheet and spread it out evenly using a spatula. Of course, the more you spread it out on the pan, the thinner your chocolate bark is going to be. Now simply add pistachios, cranberries, coconut flakes, and sea salt. Let it freeze for about an hour and then break the chocolate bark into pieces. Easy and delicious, I guarantee you'll make it again and again. I'm gonna show you how to make those hot chocolate bombs everyone is talking about. Is this not the coolest thing you've ever seen? Here's how to do it. Start by melting milk chocolate and white chocolate. Then using a half sphere silicon mold, pour the chocolate into every compartment and smooth it out evenly with a spoon. Invert the mold and shake it out on a parchment lined baking sheet. Freeze it for about seven minutes. Now carefully pop out the half spheres of chocolate. These two halves are gonna come together to create your hot chocolate bombs. Now grab your favorite hot chocolate mix and toppings and put it into the bottom half of the spheres. This could be peppermint, caramel, or marshmallows. Now using a plate warmed in the microwave, carefully melt the outer edge of the top half of the sphere. Now secure the two halves together with the melted chocolate. This is the fun part. Now decorate your hot chocolate bomb however you want. I used white chocolate and festive sprinkles. Let's see this thing in action. Pour steaming hot milk over the hot chocolate bomb and watch as it explodes into chocolatey goodness. Here's a recipe that's perfect for just one. If y'all learn any recipe from this account, I promise this is the one you're gonna wanna remember. Sometimes I sit on my couch watching Netflix and crave just one really good cookie. All you do is soften a tablespoon of butter in the microwave for 10 seconds. Mix it with a tablespoon of brown sugar, a teaspoon of regular sugar, two tablespoons of flour, a drop of vanilla, and some chocolate chips. It doesn't have raw egg in it, so you can eat the dough straight or bake it at 350 for 15 minutes, then sprinkle with salt. You're welcome.